Hello and welcome to the webinar about how to make cross-border payments easier and more cost-effective. I'm your host, Andy Ogaro, SVP of Strategy at Axletree Solutions. This is the first in a series of webinars we will be hosting along with our strategic partners, Transfermate, discussing the cross-border payments landscape. Today, we're going to be having a really focused session that we hope will make a real difference to your day-to-day -day work and business operations. I'm delighted to be joined by uh, my team of expert panelists. First up, I'd like to introduce Craig Jeffrey of Strategic Treasurer. Craig formed Strategic Treasurer LLC in 2004 to provide corporate, educational, and government entities expert advice with their treasury and financial process needs. He is the author of Strategic Treasurer, a partnership in corporate growth. Craig has over 20 years of global financial and treasury experience. Hi, Craig. It's good to uh, talk with you, Andy. Thank you. Great. Um, next, I would like to introduce Jonathan Church from Transfermate. Jonathan is an experienced director in transaction banking and cash management. Having worked with Lloyd's, Barclays, and HSBC over the past two decades, Joy, John, Jonathan is an expert in managing global finances for enterprise level companies. Hi, Jonathan. Hello, everyone. And thanks, guys. All right. So, as I said earlier, we're going to have a really focused session here. We're going to be aiming for roughly about 15 minutes duration. So we won't necessarily have time for um, live Q&A. However, I would encourage everyone to please add questions in the Q&A box. And, and we'll be able to get back to you immediately after the session. Also, please remember to add your names um, so that we know who to contact. Okay, so we're going to focus on what we're going to learn today a little bit here. So what we're going to be learning today it's really quite simple. Uh, we, want, we want to save time and money when making and receiving payments, especially cross-border payments. We're going to look at why some of these solutions exist, the value that they bring, and how it works in, with some real-life examples. Okay. All right, so why don't we dive straight in? So, Jonathan, I'm going to direct this, question, this first question to you. So why are we here today? is really the question. What are some of the current challenges with traditional methods of cross-border payments um, and B2B payments? Um, thanks, Andy. In, in four words, it's speed, transparency, cost, and administration. Um, but let me give you a couple of quick examples to, to bring that to life. Um, first is a very old traditional payment method uh, using checks, um, prone to fraud because they're bits of paper that can be um, doctored um, or changed. Um, when you use them internationally, um, they come with additional considerations. Uh, checks need to go back to the bank and commonly the branch they're drawn on in order to start the settlement process, which can take a long time. Uh, and if you speed that up by looking to negotiate a check that's being paid internationally, uh, then that normally comes with significant fees and FX um, as part of that process from the bank that's negotiating it. So a lot of uh, cost and time. Um, and hassle as well as the fraud risk um, with that payment method. Um, if we turn to the, the more um, common example of uh, international wires, uh, this is where um, the system relies on a chain and a network of banks who correspond with each other in order to get the payment from the originating um, starting place to the destination. And that's because the participating banks, other than a small handful of very global banks, um, tend to offer a broad range of products and services to a broad customer base, such as retail, corporate, net, uh, you know, high net worth, um, but in a relatively narrow jurisdictional piece. And therefore, they have to work together with other banks who have similar um, size but different geographical reaches to form get a payment from A to B. Uh, and it's basically, to give you an analogy, it's like getting on a very old train that runs on very old tracks and stops at an awful lot of stations. It's not a traditional way um, to get from A to B. Okay, so basically just uh, following from what you said, so when you summarise this, they'll boil it all down. I mean, basically slow, inaccurate, is kind of a bit like heavy lifting, right? If the, for want of a better term. And certain kind of instruments or payment instruments have traditionally been open to fraud, like you mentioned earlier on checks. And I just want to, before we go on here, I just wanted to um, uh, um, ask Craig, did you have anything that you'd like to add here? 
on the challenges, I think um, uh, Jonathan set the stage nicely with the discussion of a really old train track. And we think about these challenges. I think about uh, complexity, um, legacy technology, the number of handoffs and latency. So the complexity of dealing in many, many different countries brings with it both regulations, different systems to connect to. When I think about um, the legacy technology, it tends to be slow. It tends to be linear, point to point to point, as opposed to a system or platform orientation, which we're more and more used to uh, in our personal lives. And then the, the issue of all these handoffs, it creates these uh, with lots of stops, as Jonathan was talking about, each of those stops creates another level of opaqueness. It's harder to see where transfers are, what they cost, um, and it creates delay. So it uh, it's uh, ripe for re-engineering. Okay. All right, thanks for that, Craig. Um, so actually this next question I'll direct to you. So, you know, when we look at why do some of these challenges exist? I mean, the obvious question is uh, why is this happening? You know, why is moving money around the world so hard and so expensive? Yeah, um, I think a lot of it flows out of this um, uh, op opaqueness. It's hard to see where things are. You don't know where the transfers sit. Uh, there's usually some level of uh, needing to respond in a quickly and timely manner, and it's hidden for a long time until the payment finally pops out. So you search for it. Uh, that's one. The issue that uh, the tech has. Uh, the tech tends to be old and it's built from a, you get a message, you send it, the message is confirmed. They do something with it, they send it to the next party and it might travel between three, four, five, ten 10 different uh, counterparty banks before it's finally delivered. Funds are transferred, the message is delivered and you have days, sometimes a week uh, to know when something has happened. And each of those points of handoff and the process is inefficient, it adds cost. And so it's neither flexible, efficient, doesn't give you the visibility. Uh, and then there's also uh, control issues, of course. So those challenges exist from where we came from, um, you know, in terms of how processes existed, how technology is advancing, but that also sets the stage for new opportunities. Okay. So if I was to summarize this, so I mean, I'll summarize this down into, boil it down into really two main elements, right? So, like we said for for um, over the last couple of couple of sentences here, you know, it's built on the the current systems are built on an old infrastructure, and that old infrastructure dates back, you know, decades if not centuries. And then when we talk about the actual payment lifecycle, we see that it's going through multiple hops. Each stage of that hop requires that you know um, is subject to fees being taken. Right. And so that obviously increased the, the, the cost of the payment. You, in many cases, what you send may not necessarily be what you receive. So the next um, uh, question I'd like to you know, um, uh, direct to, to you, Jonathan. So when we start looking at an alter alternative way of doing this, you know, could you talk to a little bit about what are some of the new ways or what's the new way of processing B2B payments and how some of that infrastructure has actually been built? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, of course, Andy. So it's, it's really around trying to shorten and disintermediate this chain. So if we go back to our railway analogy, um, we want to basically place stations where we want them and then have high speed rails between them. So it's very much um, point to point uh, to speed up, um, the payments give that additional transparency and eliminate those costs, uh, the kind of challenges we've spoken of and, and the kind of uh, eliminate the reasons behind them that Craig was talking about. Okay. And actually, this is actually a, a very good, good way of looking at it, a very good kind of snapshot. When you look at the top section of this, this diagram, you see the traditional means of doing, of performing cross-border payments, right? And you see right there in the middle, the multiple, and there could be multiples, right? I mean, we see four here, but it could be any one of a number of, of um, uh, banks and institutions that are based in, required to remain within that, that chain and also are taking uh, their slice of the pie. When you look at the new way of doing things, so the bottom half of the screen, you see that it, um, uh, requ it doesn't require as many hops. You're basically going from point A to point B rather than going to 
A1, A2, A3 to get to B. And then also you, what you're doing is you're providing full transparency. It's cost effective and basically it's quick. Absolutely. So actually, just before you know, we go on to this next, next section, I just wanted to ask, you know, Craig, did you have anything you wanted to add um, to that last section there? You know, the, the idea of this, uh, this visual of a train and we talk about payment rails and how to make it more efficient, I think is, I think is really useful. Um, I, I would just add one thing is when you think about moving physical goods, they do require uh, the actual transfer and, and handoffs of physical goods, whereas payments in the digital world, there's so much more opportunity to streamline the process. Um, and and it, should, it should exceed what happens in the physical delivery world where we're used to. Like you get packages, you can see where they are. It's on the truck, it's in your neighborhood, it's on your porch. It's now stolen by a porch thief. You know, we, we know where those things are. Excellent. So, you know, uh, what I'd like to do is ask a kind of another obvious question, right? Is that, you know, why don't the banks build these, this, these, uh, this infrastructure themselves? Why don't they go ahead and just build this out? I mean, I'll direct that question really to, to Jonathan to start off with. Um, yeah, and, and I've struggled with a lot of this in, in my banking career. Um, it's because it's um, difficult, expensive and, and risky. Um, banks have got enormous customer bases. Um, they need to keep the wheels turning on their day-to-day -day operations and therefore re-engineering um, in order to do this is, is like trying to you know, rebuild parts of that train whilst you've still got a lot of passengers sitting on it, so to speak. Um, and you know, in a world where um, banks are increasingly capital constrained, focused on return on investment, um, you know, justifying doing that is, is very, very difficult when it's much easier for them to partner up with you know, a, a, a fintech that can, can do this for them. And, and that's the, the type of opportunities and, and business relationships that we have. Okay. All right, so if I summarize this, you know, the new infrastructure is built, built by fintechs, but in many cases is, is backed by, by some of the banks, right? It's backed by banks in order to, to make that, uh, uh, you know, more of a, a reality. Um, and it does cut down the third party. So it's cutting down a number of parties and a number of hops that like we talked about this in the, in the chain. And they work by allowing payments to actually go from point A to point B, like I said, without having to jump through the intermediate steps. And then when you start looking at the, the security models that have been implemented through the innovation, it's basically building on top of what um, uh, current regulations are actually there in place right now. So it's, it's making it even more secure. Absolutely. We, we've built security for the modern day, not had to evolve security on systems that have been around for an awfully long time. So um, it's easier, faster and cheaper to, to deliver that security alongside, um, obviously, the, the fast, efficient uh, payment rails. Excellent. Yeah. So this next question, I'd like to go back to you very quickly, Craig. So, you know, when we start looking at the benefits that organizations can derive from this new infrastructure, I'd like to kind of you know, just get your, your view on that. Sure. I mean, we, we think about uh, payments and tech use generally uh, in terms of things like um, speed, um, flexibility, um, visibility, efficiency, control. Um, and when you think about speed, um, what are the benefits? Well, I can move transfers much more rapidly. They're not doing all the handoffs. I have visibility now through all parts of it. I shave off days, sometimes a week, uh, to... Uh, moving it to uh, hours or minutes. So that's, uh, that's significant for many types of transfers and we're accustomed to it. So that's the first benefit. The second is there's that transparency throughout the process. I can see where my payment is. I can see what it costs from an end-to-end -end basis. I'm not left uh, wondering about what occurs. Um, there's also you know cost and charges. Every time you have handoffs, every point of handoff is a point of friction. It's a point of cost a potential point of exposure and vulnerability. And so reducing charges, reducing FX rate uh, lifts that, that occur are taken out. And the fact that it's uh, you know, built on new technology helps it to be secure, uh, allows us to automate uh, payments in the reconciliation process more on a platform basis as opposed to 
uh, a legacy model of point to point to point to point. Um, so data systems, speed, all uh, bring benefits to the users of this type of platform. Yes, and this could probably be seen in the in the next slide. Where really what we're talking about is we're optimizing optimizing for speed, cost, visibility, operational efficiency, and the security. So these are some of the, the benefits that we're seeing by this new infrastructure. Just going on what you said, um, Craig, that the fact that it's built on a newer infrastructure rather than having to retrofit an older infrastructure uh, means that we could take advantage of some of the innovation to make um, uh, to make make it more secure, more reliable and quick. Now in this next section, I want to um, just take an opportunity. You know, we've talked a little bit about the, 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 the what. Now we want to talk a little bit about the how. So I'm going to ask Jonathan to just run through a couple of case studies that we may have so we could see how it's been used in a real world example. Yeah, thank you, Andy, and uh, and hopefully this will bring it to life for, for the audience. So um, Wells Fargo um, are a bank that work with us. It's that example of um, a bank that is incredibly um, huge, has a massive customer base, um, but has partnered up with Transformators of FinTech in order to power their global collections um, business. Um, so, you know, a classic example of a bank and FinTech partnership. Um, Cooper, um, massive spend management and procurement software. Um, given the international reach of procurement that goes through their platform. Um, if uh, Cooper clients want to pay for their goods through Cooper Pay, then that is transformate under the bonnet and they integrate uh, with us on an API basis so they can just plug into us as a licensed payment provider um, underneath. Trade Shift is a great example of the international range that we have um, given the international nature of uh, trade and supply chains and we are, we're able to help trade shift and make their payments faster um, and more transparently and at lower cost uh, than before. Uh, Erasmus is an example of uh, the educational vertical that we have at Transformate which is one of um, one of our leading ones. Um, given the nature of international students it's a, a very growing and, and well-established market. Um, we help both um, international students uh, make their payments to their uh, institution uh, easier, uh, cheaper and faster than they could before um, and that helps the institution with, with getting those funds in um, in time for term starting. Uh, finally Opportunity International and NGO that work with us um, given the nature of NGO um, type work they're dealing with exotic currencies and a wide variety of locations and also with a small team so being able to use a fast, cheap um, uh, and efficient payment method, you know, allows them to focus on what they're ultimately trying to achieve as an organisation, you know, rather than all of that admin hassle and friction that we've talked about in managing international payments. Thank you, Jonathan. What I'd like to do is take a couple of seconds to talk about the partnership between Axletree and Transfermate. Through this strategic partnership, what this allows Axletree's clients to do is to um, transact in over 200 countries and 140 currencies. For the Transformate clients, what this allows them to do is to leverage Symmetry by Axletree to perform any-to-any -any format transformations. Um, we're nearly at the, the tail end here. So what I want to do before we kind of get to, to the end is I just want to like, see if there's any final thoughts from any of the panelists around this session. So I'll start with you, Craig. Uh, you know, I think the, the one thing is that technology and processes have changed so much, and it's no surprise that it's coming into the payment domain as well, brought about by um, changed expectations from our, cons our lives as consumers to the capabilities brought about by tech and rethinking uh, payment rails. So this is, a, this is a good time to be in, in payments. Uh, Jonathan? Yeah, and, I, and I'll just add to that, you know, we've We've had that latter mover advantage in terms of the, the way we've been able to deal with the technology uh, in, in, in terms of the security piece, um, as well as the, the feature functionality. Uh, and, and given the, you know, the large footprint that Transformate has, we're delighted to be able to you know, offer that in partnership with Axeltree. Thank you, Craig, and thank you, Jonathan. So if you're interested in learning more about how to make cross-border payments more efficient and cost-effective, please do get in contact with us. Um, our contact details are on this particular slide. 
but you could either reach out to us directly or you could go to our respective websites. I'd like to thank you all so much for coming and I hope this has been a good use of your time. I'd like to also thank the panelists. Thank you very much.